On this edition of Food for Life, from the Lift Jesus High Rally, Cardinal Thomas Collins on, I Come to Do Your Will. We need to ask the Lord to help us to be zealous in fulfilling the mission he's entrusted to us. Do our best, work hard, be clear, repent, all those things we need to do. But always to you, O Lord, here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. I very often find great consolation in what is said to be a statement by Pope John XXIII. And that is that it is said that he would say at the end of every day, after he had worked so hard to be a good Pope and to govern the church and deal with the countless problems which he faced in throughout the whole church, he would say, well, Lord, it's your church. You take care of it. I'm going to bed. I've often found a lot of consolation in that. (laughs) I try it a little differently. Well, Lord, it's your diocese. You take care of it. I'm going to bed. (laughs) There's a profound wisdom in that, as in so many different things that that very holy and saintly Pope uh, taught us and showed us through his example. But I think it's a reminder to us as we come to the end of one period of our life and prepare now for the great time of repentance that is upon us in the season of Lent, for us to think about our basic mission as we stand before the Lord. We are called to be zealous. We're called to give our whole lives for Christ, to use the gifts which he has given to us, for we are stewards of those gifts. We're just loaned our time, our talent, our treasure. It's just loaned to us during this brief period in this world, which passes so quickly. And we're called to make good use of what the Lord has entrusted to us during this time. We're called to be zealous, zealous stewards of the mysteries of God, zealous stewards of the gifts of God. We're not to goof off in this brief period of time we have. We're to be eager, imaginative, hardworking, zealous. We owe that to the Lord, for we do it all for our Lord Jesus. And yet, as we do that, busily seeking to serve him faithfully, and I think especially in this time of Lent that's upon us, we begin to start checking the dials to see how we're doing. That's sort of a good thing to do, but it can get a little too much. Because although it's very important for us to be zealous about our mission and about our own spiritual life, and that's why we need to be repentant and examine our consciences and do it right, do all the right things. It's also possible for us then to get a little too much absorbed in that. We're called not just to be zealous stewards of God's mysteries, but zealous and trusting stewards of God's mysteries. For they are God's mysteries, not ours. Everything including time itself, even our life, It's just loaned to us for a period by the Lord. And then in due time, we offer it back to him and whatever time is his calling. And so we need to say, well, Lord, I work hard all day, but it's your church. You take care of it. I'm going to bed. (laughs) We turn it over to the Lord. We need to do that. We can often find a, a difficulty in our spiritual life if we are checking the dials too much. How am I doing Well, we should do it a bit. Just like at the end of every day, it's a good idea to make an examination of conscience for 41.2 seconds. (laughs) Very good idea. Maybe we should spend a couple of minutes thanking God for his blessings in our lives, then be ruthlessly honest for 42.5 seconds about our ways we may have fallen and failed and stumbled and ask the Lord's repentance, Then spend a couple more minutes thanking God for his mercy in our lives. We've got to be zealous in checking out, doing it right, examining how things are. But always surrounded by our loving trust in the providence of God. Always that must be the context of our zeal. And we must have both. It's not enough just to say, I trust you, Lord, and then goof off. That's Our Lord asks 
more of us than that. But it's also not enough to be busy about the work of the Lord even, and certainly about our other things, and not recognize, well, Lord, it's, my life is your life. You gave it to me. You take care of it. That is the trust we need to have. And so we look at the, the readings today which speak to us of this. We look at the first reading for the prophet Isaiah, who certainly is very much brisk in calling the people to a high standard through all the prophets are. But he points out that the Lord will never forget you. Even if a mother forget her child, he will never forget you. We are in his hands. He cares for us and loves us. We may be far from him at times, but he's never far from us. We always need to come home and say, here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. And as we face the challenges in our lives, which are nothing compared to what people in the days of the prophets faced, we need to ask the Lord to help us to be zealous and fulfilling the mission he's entrusted to us, do our best, work hard, be clear, repent, do all those things we need to do. But always to you, O Lord, here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. For he never forgets us. We're always in his hands. No matter how far we run away from him, he's always close to us. And loving us and caring for us, lifting us up. In the second reading today, we, we see... St. Paul, who again, if there's ever anyone who was a kind of a zealous fanatic in persecuting the church and then in a kind of a blessedly jealous fanatic in proclaiming the gospel too, eager, demanding, all of that. And yet he points out we are merely stewards of the mysteries of God. We don't own anything. We don't own the property we have. We don't own time. We don't own the church. We're just stewards of the mysteries of God. We're not masters of the mysteries. We're stewards. We're trusty. We're entrusted with them for a time until the Lord calls us to himself and we come to the Father's house. And so Paul also recognized he who was temperamentally super zealous, I don't think he probably ever goofed off at all in his life. He's one of those people, remember hearing someone who was writing a talk on the Sabbath and worked seven days a week to write it. <laughs> That's kind of like St. Paul. <laughs> but in the midst of all of that, he grew in the wisdom to see that it must all be surrendered to God's will. In that too, we can learn a bit from St. John the 23rd, because I highly recommend everybody read the Journal of a Soul, his notes, his sort of retreat notes from the time he was a seminarian. And he was, I don't know whether you call someone from Italy an eager beaver, that sounds too Canadian to be that, <laughs> but he was an eager beaver. And he was burrowing away, working, 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 and on the way up and all that, you know, and dealing with pride and all these things, because he was really good at what he did, and boom, 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 away he went. So he didn't get there right away. He said that about, well, Lord, it's your church, you take care of it, I'm going to bed, when he was in his 70s. <laughs> Earlier on, he was taking care of his, the church and everything else, and he, but he learned. You know the old saying that's very consoling, be patient with me, God isn't finished with me yet. So it takes time to blend together the zeal of being a faithful steward, eager, hardworking, energetic, as we're called to be, out of love for the Lord. Like St. Paul, like John the 23rd and all the great saints. And at the same time, to be trusting stewards of the mysteries of God recognizing that's all we are, as St. Paul tells us. We're not, it's not our church. It's not our life even. It's all a gift from the Lord. And he is always close to us, holding us in his hands. And so at the end of every day, we 
We give thanks to the Lord for his gifts, and we ask the Lord's forgiveness for our failures. And we ask the Lord to help us to be better tomorrow. But always to you, O Lord. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Take me, take me, Lord. I'm in your hands. And in the gospel, our Lord speaks of this. Of how all the different things we can be so eager about how we can spend our time to build up treasures and it could be wealth but it could be other things too sometimes more subtle treasures we build up it's not necessarily a bank account it can be all kinds of popularity or pride and all kinds of things we can do so we shouldn't sort of dismiss just point to no we, we could do that and yet he says all that worry the worry we spend on things that do not matter. What a waste it is. The Lord God who clothes the lilies of the field with such splendor that not even Solomon could match. And we are so busy, 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 busy. How fruitlessly we spin our wheels, even in glorious and good things sometimes. We think they are anyway. And we get all worried. It's very natural. Worry is the thing that grinds us down. Especially, I think, if we want to do the right thing, or if we're responsible, or if we have some duty that we have placed upon us, and a noble one, and a one that calls us. It's very easy to say, don't worry. It's easy to have it from the neck up, but down in the heart, it's a little harder. <laughs> don't worry. Well, our zeal, which is good, leads us to worry. But it must be combined with trust. And say, here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. It is in your hands, O Lord. I know I'm a, a kind of, um, I've always been a kind of a highly organized type, you know. Boom, 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 all this kind of stuff. Just the way I am. Sort of neat desk, but messy drawer, that's me. <laughs> I keep the chaotic side out of sight. What can I do? It's just the way it is. But I remember once a very wise priest said, he recommended to me that I read the Sacrament of the Present Moment but that by the Kossad. Very sensible. And that's really drawn out of the Gospel of today. And it really leads into also other very wise things within our spiritual tradition. Where our Lord says, he's very, how, how blunt can you get? You know, Today has enough worries of its own. Don't be worrying about tomorrow. We're going to have no more worries tomorrow. This is our Lord saying this to us. But it comes down to one day at a time, the sacrament of the present moment. Take each moment, each day, and say, it is to you, O Lord. And recognize that all our many worries simply load us down. What can we do? We do our best. My dad used to say, do the best you can with what you've got where you are. And it's very hard to beat a father's wisdom. I, I remember, well, never, well, I haven't forgotten that. I'm a long time since he said that. Do the best you can with what you got where you are, which is sort of like, well, Lord, it's your church. You take care of it. I'm going to bed. <laughs> we do the best we can with what we've got where we are, and then it's in the hands of the Lord. And don't be letting worry grind us down. So today, as we celebrate this Holy Eucharist, and we prepare now for a season of time in which we are called to check the dials a bit and you know the season of repentance and rightly so we need this regularly we need it every day and every week and every year we need to have as well that sense of surrender to God's will his provident hand is lifting us up he is always close to us no matter how far we are from him we're always he's close to us he calls us to be zealous stewards, to use to the full the gifts we have because they're given to us. Our very energy and our detail and our passion and our, our organizational skills and our talents and all those things we have, whatever we have, whatever the gifts we have, we're called to use them because they're gifts from God. But we're not called to get all hung up on them. At the end of the day, we use them to the glory of God and the service of God's people and then we surrender our lives into the hands of the Lord. 
That's why it's very important every day to spend time in adoration before the Lord. Just quiet time. Where instead of busy, 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 we say, here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. On the instructions that come from the manufacturer, the very first page, it says six days on, one day off. Busy, busy, busy in those six days, and we think my importance comes from my busyness, my popularity, my success, my whatever. On the seventh day, Sabbath time, we say, here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. That is enough. We surrender into his hands. And that's why we come here to the celebration of the Holy Eucharist as well. The word of God challenges us to look at those ways in our life where we are not living as God calls us to and challenges us to do more, to be more zealous as stewards of his mysteries. But then, after that, we come to receive our blessed Lord, who's with us on the journey, always close at hand, never far away, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in whom we trust always, to, whose, to whom we commit our lives. And so we never have a frantic zeal, but always a serene, trusting zeal as stewards of God's mysteries. May the Lord bless us and keep us in that and help us to be faithful to him day by day, one day at a time, making use effectively, earnestly, zealously of the gifts which he has given to us to be used for his glory in the service of our brothers and sisters, but always with an awareness that we're only stewards of the mysteries of God. We're not the master. The master is the master. We're just servants. We serve faithfully, and then finally, with loving trust, we come into the home of the Master. He welcomes us, as he does every day, and gives us the strength to come closer to him. That is our mission on this world. And if we approach our life that way, then our service will be fruitful. Because it will not just be our own abilities that do whatever we do, but it will be, we will become transparent to the Lord and become supple and obedient and effective instruments of His grace. For an audio CD or video DVD of the teaching by Cardinal Thomas Collins on I Come to Do Your Will, we invite you to write to us. Our address is Food for Life, Box 1107, Station F, Toronto, Ontario, M4Y2T8. When you write, ask for an audio CD or video DVD of the teaching by Cardinal Thomas Collins on I Come to Do Your Will. On the next edition of Food for Life, Father Mark Goring looks at Guard Your Heart. One of the main things we should do during our prayer time is look deeply into our hearts. We should know our hearts. And not only that, but our hearts should never lose, we should never lose sight of our hearts. Again, if we're guarding our hearts, we won't lose sight of it. The saying goes that, tell me who your friends are, and I'll tell you who you are. Or sometimes, tell me who your friends are, and I'll tell you what kind of person you are. They also say that our closest friends are our thoughts. What are you thinking? What, what kind of thoughts uh, are with us throughout the day? What kind of thoughts accompany us? It's very important to be aware of our thoughts. That's why St. Paul challenges us, challenges us to be transformed by the renewal of our minds. Romans chapter 12. You see, 
the greatest battles each one of us will ever have to fight will be right here in our minds. There are great victories and great defeats that happen right in our mind. And so we need to be very aware of this battleground within us. The Lord calls us to, to be aware of this. There's also a saying that where you are is less important than where your thoughts are. I tell this to the university students I work with. You know, you can, you can be at university and thinking to yourself, yes, you know, this is wonderful, I'm at a university. Or you can go through the days thinking, oh my gosh, I'm at, uni- I'm at a university. Where are your thoughts? Where your thoughts are is more important than actually where, where you are. Our thoughts play such an important role in our lives. We're each one of us meant to guard our minds, guard our thoughts. Just like a soldier who is guarding a gateway. A soldier, his, his duty is to make sure that no enemies enter into uh, the kingdom or the castle. And so too, we need to station a guard over our thoughts. We need to be very careful which thoughts we allow into our minds. And one of the things I try to do throughout the day is I find, or if, 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 if a, a bad thought comes to me, I immediately respond by saying a little prayer calling on the name of Jesus, remembering a scripture. Because it's so important not to let these thoughts make their home in our minds and eventually uh, in our hearts. Now, as we do this, we, we need to have a certain uh, peace. You know, we don't want to kind of control our thoughts in a, in a neurotic way where we're, we, we become anxious. They say that nature works best if she is not too closely watched. So generally, our minds are occupied with, with good things. You know, we might be thinking about what we're doing tomorrow or enjoying, enjoying the beauty of something, thinking about how nice a sunset is or, or, or things like that. Generally, our minds uh, can take care of themselves. But sometimes there are thoughts that are introduced, negative thoughts, you know, uh, depressing thoughts, uh, thoughts that lead us to anger or resentment. And when those come, we need to 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 respond quickly and immediately. And again, one of the best things to do is to call on the name of the Lord Jesus. Um, I mean, sometimes we do have thoughts that are disturbing that we do need to take time to process. Maybe we need to to forgive someone who who has hurt us. Maybe we need to uh, ask the Lord for some wisdom about a situation. Uh, But again, we always need to keep guard. Another principle is to drive out bad thoughts by introducing good thoughts. That's something else I'll do throughout the day. If I find my mind is uh, preoccupied with something negative, I'll say to myself, think of 10 good things in your life. Give thanks to the Lord for 10 things. And usually by the time I get to the third or fourth thing, I've forgotten the other thing that was worrying me. And so again, when we have bad thoughts, uh, they say, well, the best thing to do is to to introduce good thoughts, and the bad thoughts will work their way out. Another expression is the expression, perhaps you've heard it before, junk in, junk out. If we bring junk into our minds, we will uh, become a person whose life is kind of junky. We will, our actions will reflect what's going on in our thoughts. Our words will reflect what's going on in our minds. And that's why we should always be careful not to let junk into our minds and eventually into our hearts. You know, be careful about what you watch on TV. You should only watch Food for Life. Just joking. But be careful. Be careful with what you watch on TV, um, what kind of music you listen to, what kind of people you surround yourself with, what kind of reading you do. And again... The focus should not be on emptying our life, it should be on filling our life. So surround yourselves with good people. 
Read inspiring books. Read books that are going to make you want to become a better person. You know, watch Food for Life every week. <laughs> I'm having fun with this. Anyways, the point is, is that um, uh, we should bring good things into our minds and our minds will more naturally think about good things. Like I experience this all the time. If I'm reading a really good, inspiring book, I find myself thinking about that book throughout the day and it inspires me. Like that's a good thing. We should do, all, we should do that all of the time. And so again... Our thoughts are our closest friends. Who are your closest friends? Do you need new friends? Find new friends. Introduce good thoughts in your life and you will find deeper peace. God bless you. I'm here in uh, St. Mary's Church, which is a real blessing because this is where I uh, attend Mass each Sunday. And every Sunday we pass the collection basket so that to give the parishioners an opportunity to support the good work that's happening here and to cover the expenses and, and the salaries and the upkeep of the church. If you've been blessed by the Food for Life ministry and are in a position to support us um, with some of the costs that we have, uh, the broadcasting and other costs, um, we'd be really glad to, to hear from you. So send us a little note if you can. Um, if you can't, we're just as happy to hear from you and, uh, and to put your intentions on our prayer list. Father, I thank you that you've blessed us in so many ways. Father, through your word, through the places that we go and we worship you and hear your word. Lord, we know that you want to provide for those who minister your word. So Lord, we ask you to uh, continue to, to bless the communities that we're involved with and, and this ministry as well, Lord. And we place all of this in your hands, Jesus. In your precious name we pray, amen. We would like to thank you for your financial support of the Food for Life television ministry. Food for Life is funded only by viewers like yourself. We have no commercial sponsors. Your tax-deductible donations help pay for production of the program, pay the television station for the time that the program is on the air, and pay for the mailing of our monthly newsletter. For an audio CD or video DVD of today's ministry, we invite you to write to us. When you write, mention the program number 1556 and today's topic, Cardinal Thomas Collins on I Come to Do Your Will. Food for Life is a nonprofit Catholic charity funded only by donations from viewers. To help us continue this Catholic television ministry, please send your tax deductible donation to Food for Life. Box 1107, Station F, Toronto, Ontario, M4Y2T8. To save postage, you may now make your donation online. Just go to our website and follow the link. If you have never donated before, we ask that you make your check payable to Food for Life, and our address is Food for Life, Box 1107, Station F, Toronto, Ontario, M4Y2T8. On the next edition of Food for Life, Father Mark Goring looks at Guard Your Heart. One of the main things we should do during our prayer time is look deeply into our hearts. We should know our hearts. And not only that, but our hearts should never lose, we should never lose sight of our hearts. Again, if we're guarding our hearts, we won't lose sight of it. For an audio CD or video DVD of the teaching by Cardinal Thomas Collins on I Come to Do Your Will, we invite you to write to us. Our address is Food for Life, Box 1107, Station F, Toronto, Ontario, M4Y2T8. When you write, ask for an audio CD or video DVD of the teaching by Cardinal Thomas Collins on I Come to Do Your Will.